Good morning, welcome to another video with a guy and his projects. Today we are working on the ZJ build. This is a 1994 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo ZJ. It's got the inline six engine, the 4.0 liter. Um, it is four wheel drive and we are building this to be my new toy. So before we can actually start playing with it, we have to make it mechanically all right. And there's a lot of things not all right with this. Uh, we've done head gaskets, we've done all kinds of gaskets up on the top of the engine. Now we're working our way down to the bottom. So this has a really bad rear main seal leak. Um, it's dripping uh, pretty much once a second. Uh, it's pretty much drip, drip drip uh, the whole time this vehicle's running and for a while after you shut it off. Uh, so we're going to be replacing the rear main seal. In order to do that, we have to drop the pan. From what I understand, we can leave the transmission and the engine in place. I did a little bit of reading, um, not a lot, uh, but I did some reading. And from what I'm gathering, this is totally doable if you just drop the suspension. So we have it jacked up on the frame, drop the suspension. We took the tires off just so that and got more room for cameras. Um, you don't have to drop or take off the tires, I don't believe. Um, uh, I went ahead and removed the steering stabilizer because some people said you needed to, some people said you didn't, and mine is trash. So I already pulled off the steering stabilizer. I'm gonna throw another cheapy one in. My problem with buying new parts, well one, so the idea is I'm gonna drive this for a while. I'm gonna put a couple thousand miles on it once I fix all the leaks just to make sure it's mechanically sound at that point before I start building it for off-road use. So I don't want junk parts that are gonna fall apart and not work, but at the same time, I've already bought axles. I've got axles. Um, so I've got one tons to go under this and it's gonna be a while before I get them under there. So while I'm driving it in between, I gotta have decent parts. So essentially all of the trash parts I'm replacing with the cheapest parts I can find on the internet to put in their place. So um, O'Reilly's actually has a $34 steering dampener with a kingpin and all that. So I'm gonna throw that in there, run up there later and get it. Um, but yeah, so just a lot of, yeah. I hate spending money on something I'm not keeping, but whatever. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I have no idea what I'm doing, so don't follow what I'm doing, but we're going to do it and uh, hopefully it works out for us. If you follow what I do, it is all on you, partner. So, pretty much that's it. Uh, I don't really have a plan. So, um, I took the steering dampener off and it looks like I might be able to get the pan out as is. Um, we might have to move, might have to move the tires over to the driver's side. Uh, I don't know that. But it looks like everything in front of the pan is clear all the way down to the back. The exhaust looks tight and the starter looks tight. I just put the exhaust on, have no interest in taking it back off. Uh, but if we have to, we have to. The starter, if we have to take it off, it shouldn't be a big deal, I hope. I don't know that. Um, but I'm going to try and do this without taking either of those off because, well, I just don't want to take either of them off. So, without further ado, let's do all right, so obviously the first thing we got to do in order to remove the pan, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure the exhaust is going to have to come out, but I'm going to wait until I absolutely have to because that was a pain in the butt. Um, anyway, in order to get the pan off, you want to remove the oil because well, you don't want oil in everything. So we're going to go ahead and just grab our 16 millimeter inch. All right. There it goes. Okay. And there she be. We're just going to let that drain. Once you're done dripping to an appropriate level, I'm going to go ahead and put my plug back in. All right, so underneath, your pan extends from the front all the way to the back. Um, and it looks like a myriad of different sized nuts and bolts and studs. So we are just going to uh, have to fit each one. Well, you get the idea. I'm not going to record this whole time. Go through. I'm going to unloosen all of those and then hopefully pop the pan off. All right, so we've reached a point where the pan is loose. I got one more bolt holding it up. I'm going to take that bolt out and see if I can find a way to wiggle this thing out. 
I'm looking at the picture. I need to look at the lens. So I need to find if I can wiggle this out. Starter's intact, exhaust is intact, everything else is intact except the steering stabilizer, which I removed. So when I take this last bolt out, I guess we'll start wiggling and a jiggling. So um, as far as all these holes, what I ended up doing is I have a box like this. I wrote my arrow for the front bumper and I just put all of them in a row. Most of the bolts are the same size, but these studs um, are slightly different here and there for some reason, not sure why. Uh, so I just laid them out like that just to make it easy for putting them back in later. And as messy as everything is down here, I'm gonna have to use a crap ton of brake clean to uh, you know, clean this up. So let me pull this last bolt out right here. Just holding up the whole oil paint right there. Whoop. Also worthy of notation, these all seem to be either 11 or 13 millimeter. Most of them 11 with a couple of 13s. All right, so our oil pan is now just free flying. It's kind of hanging on these lines right here right now. And uh, yeah, I guess it's time to uh, figure out how the heck we're gonna wiggle this out. So bear with me. So you can't just yank it out because on this side, the sump, there should be an oil pickup tube. Let's hope. We're about an inch too shy of pulling this down because the axle is a little bit in the way. So if we, let me think, if we pick, if we pick the suspension up, it should go forward. Is that true? Don't know, let's try it. Unless we turn the steering wheel that way, but I don't see how that's gonna help. It'll give us more clearance here, but that doesn't seem to be the issue. The issue would appear to be on the front end at the bell housing. So, how do we clear the bell housing? People. I'm not feeling a lot of promise here because this axle is definitely in the way. So everybody who said you could do it this way seems to have been misleading a little bit. So the alternative is we can bust these shocks loose and see if the axle drops a little bit more. Maybe that'll work. So let's bust the shocks loose. How you doing on battery, guys? 28%, yeah, that might be enough. Let's go ahead and grab this. Pump it up just momentarily, just to hold on while I pull this other shock off. We're gonna pull our other shock bolt off. Not the axle supported. Urgh. Okay, so now we are going to gently release the axle. See how much we drop. Not much actually. <laughs> so, it must be being held up by the sway bar. <sighs> Never ends. That game does like nothing. <laughs> Which at least I guess means we know that the Shock is not our bottom point. Which is uh, like no comfort, but whatever. I don't know why we need comfort on that? So, so option two. I wonder what we can access from here. Yeah, let's take off the sway bar end links. All right, so we're gonna go hit our sway bar end link, which is a 15 millimeter. Jeez, that's on there tight. I'm kind of hoping that because we're not supporting the side, there's enough pressure on the bolt. Nothing gets bound up right now. Okay, so it's just about to the end. And we're just about resting on that, so it shouldn't fall. So sway bar in. We're gonna end up buying some of those too. Just cheapy ones. <laughs> that did not fall very far, but 
Whoa, that's sketchy. It might be enough, so let's go do the other side. Dan, let's try and drop this just a little bit. Well, if that's enough or not, but we're gonna find out. All we needed was about an inch. And that gave us about half an inch. How fabulous. So we need another half an inch to get this sucker out of here. Oh, jeez. Pain in the butt, hmm? So the next theory I have is possibly jacking up the transmission. Should we try it? Nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? That is the potential. This might work out. Okay, so we're gonna pick up the transmission as much as it might let us. Let's try that. More. So close. Oh, and it's still not enough. It's so close. This axle's really in my way. Man, I really thought that was gonna do it for us. And then this exhaust is definitely going to be in our way now. I don't know what to do now. Because the more we drop the axle, the more forward it's going to go, right? So do we need to try Picking up the axle. I think picking up the axle would move it forward. Then why would everybody say you need to? I don't I just don't know what I'm doing. Okay guys, we got something figured out. I was having a problem getting the pan to drop because there wasn't enough room between the axle and the, uh, well, there just wasn't enough room. So I did, what I thought was right, and I dropped the axle, I disconnected the shocks, disconnected the sway bar end links so that the axle could drop. But what happens is, I think it's called geometry. <laughs> so <clears throat> what happens is as you're driving, uh, and or right now, when you drop the axle because of these short arms, your axle actually moves in. So the further it drops, the more it moves in. And that was causing a problem, I didn't have enough clearance. And I didn't recognize that at first. I was sitting here playing and I'm looking online. Everybody's like, drop your axle, drop your axle. So I dropped it farther, disconnected the sway bar links, dropped it farther, and it was just getting tighter and tighter. So I realized that what I actually needed to do was jack the axle up to push it forward this way to create enough clearance for the pan to drop. Also, what I've done is I took a little jack, a little, uh, bottle jack and I'm picking up on the transmission because my transmission mount is shot. It's completely trash. Uh, so I picked up on the transmission, okay? Picked up on the axle and that has given me enough room to pull the pan out. Um, I'm assuming because it dropped, I have enough room at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out and then uh, all right, I just went from 47% battery to zero in about a minute and a half, so that battery's toast. So anyway, I don't know how much uh, I got saved. I should have enough room to pull the pan out, uh, so let me go ahead and pull it out. And then I have to take a break because I actually have a meeting I have to jump on online. So hopefully you guys can see. I wanna crawl under. Let me just slide this out, hopefully. this out sideways out and down just like that booyah this is out there's the pan this is the bottom part of your engine da -da 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 -da. so i've seen a couple other youtubers they have like a race that goes down here or whatever you want to call it i don't have that this is a 94 um but this gasket is also gonna have to come off. Oh, that's pretty gummed up on there. But what we're after is the rear main seal, which I believe is going to be right behind these guys, but I'm gonna wait until after my meeting to uh, tackle that. All right, so these seem to be a 21 millimeter nut or bolt. Uh, 
broken. So that one's broken loose. And this one. bolt unfortunately this smells a little bit burnt down here which is kind of uh, sketchy but hope it's nothing too serious okay pull that out yeah that smells nasty and we're gonna try and pull this gasket off here oh the gasket is ripped right here I don't know if I did that when I pulled it off the pan or if it's been ripped, but either way it's ripped. Yeah. No idea what you guys can see there, but I'm just pulling off the gasket. I don't know if this is good news or not, but this does not look like the original gasket. Like I said, good or bad, don't know. Just fact. Um, it does look like I shouldn't have to clean up a whole bunch of this belly. So now this, which is what is hopefully holding in the rear main seal. I'm going to pop this off somehow. <laughs> Seems like it's in there pretty good, so we might have to encourage it. Let's see, do I have an encourager? And this. Ah, there it goes. Okay. Okay, so that's gonna pull out. Keep in mind, I said I don't know what I'm doing, and I meant it. So there should be the seal right there. I grabbed a punch. I don't know if this is the best option, but I grabbed it, and we're just gonna see if we can push it through. We're gonna drip some oil. Where'd my glove go? Oh, my rag. Okay, so I got my rag handy for the oil drips. Let's just see if we can push this through. Yo! It's gonna be rough. Okay, there it goes. There it goes, that's promising. So we're just tapping it with a hammer. And a punch, see, punch. Hammer, and it started to come out. That was actually pretty nice. So I don't know how the new one's gonna go in per se. In fact, I'm kind of sketched out about it. But let's see if we can just pull this out. Oh, nope. How much farther can that punch go in? A little bit. Okay, that's coming out really easy actually. It's just coming out a radius instead of straight. So let's see if we can just keep pulling it. Oh, there it goes. Uh-huh. Hey, not bad, okay. Uh-huh. 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 Oh. Oh. A little bit difficult, but it's coming. Yeah, this uh, seal has seen better days. Trying not to damage anything here. Other than the seal, of course. There it goes. All right, seal is out. Now, how do we get the new one in? Okay, so here is your rear main seal, I think. Yep, okay, so we're gonna pull this up. The little needle nose pliers that came right up. Now, before I put this all back together, I want to break clean the heck out of this because it is nasty. Plastic installation aid or shoehorn is provided. What? Okay, so after you get this cleaned up, um, you do got to clean out this uh, gasket material. So there is something to pay attention to. In the instructions for that this came in, it references the large side. It needs to go towards the front of the engine. Now, I don't know 
well, I don't remember if it said large or different, but my take on that was the large side. I don't really know what they're talking about. So what I did is I looked at this and I realized that this has to go in like so because of these tabs. And then I just managed the upper portion. Now there's two different sides, obviously. The sides look different and I just matched it up and put that in the same way that this should theoretically go in here. Um, I'm assuming that's fairly important to note which is why I'm noting it for you. I have this Max Flex gasket maker. Um, the only issue with this is it wants 24 hours before you start up, but I think it'll work out for what we're doing. I just won't start it up till tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I'm not really sure <laughs> where all the gasket stuff goes. I'm just gonna put some on the end here. Beep, beep. And right here. And then same thing on the other side. It's a lot thicker bead than I intended, but you know, whatever. So then as this slides down, theoretically, it should squish the gasket as well. Just gonna push this down, push this in, push this in on this side. Clean up our gasket maker. Okay, so now I've got some brand spanking new engine oil. I'm just gonna dip the first half of the seal in it. And then we're going to attempt to feed it up in there just like the other one came out. It seemed to come out fairly all right. Okay, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Get this nice and flat. All right. Oh no, too far. Push it back on the side. All right, perfection. All right, so we are still under the Jeep. I just went in and I cleaned up all the gasket mating area all the way around. Um, for this, I just use, I have these uh, scrapers from OEM Tools. Comes in a three pack, you get a few different sizes. I'll link them down below. Um, very helpful, I actually really like those tools. So the goal isn't to make this shiny, it's to make it flat and smooth, just so that your new gasket has something clean and clear to mate to. The oil's gonna keep piling up, don't worry about it, just get it clean. Again, I don't know what I'm doing, but that's what I'm saying. So, moving on. There's definitely a lot of uh, yucky buildup like this. This is all just oil, gunk, and buildup. So what I'm probably going to do, I mean, it's 27 years old, 260,000 miles or 50. Um, so I'm probably gonna run some sea foam through this for a lot. I'm gonna put some fresh oil in, put some sea foam in, let it run a couple hundred miles, dump the oil, refill it, sea foam, and I'm probably gonna do that three or four times. I'll just use the cheapy oil um, because there is a lot of buildup in here. Maybe that'll help clean some of it up. Uh, and then, yeah, that's our plan for right now. So now this bearing cap bolts say 80 foot pounds of torque. I feel like that's a lot, but they were pretty tight, so we'll go with it. So this is gonna go back in, just the way it came out, hopefully. And we're gonna put this bolt in here. And we're gonna put this one in on this side. We've got our torque wrench set to 80 footers. Pop this in here. Kind of slim pickings for space, but you know, whatever. Oh, get however you gotta get. Okay, that one's at eighty. And that one's at 80. All right, so now we are ready to stage our new gasket, which is this bad boy right here. I'm just gonna make sure it fits all nice and proper before we get overly excited about a whole lot of anything. 
which it looks like it does. All the bolt holes line up more or less. Still greasy. So I think, and I feel like the hard part is going to be getting this up into place. Now, reading the service manual, it says cut some studs, stick them up, and then you can put this up in place and the gasket will stay in place. I feel like by the time you go through all that effort, if you just try to do it as is, you'll be fine. So something I am noticing is after I cleaned all this up, there's a lot of just brown discoloration in here. I very well may end up replacing this pan down the road. Um, but for today, I kind of want to just get finished. So <laughs> we're going to put it up there as is. guys so now we wait my wife had to run to an appointment so I got the kids so I can't really continue on um, I'm kind of at a point where I kind of need to run to the local store anyway my part store so I'm gonna go ahead and replace <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and replace these uh, sway bar end links uh, the bushings are completely toast so I'm gonna run up for that I'm going to replace the, or the steering dampener because that's toast. So I'm kind of at a point where I got to run over to the store for that anyway. It's 24 hours to drive before putting into service. So tomorrow afternoon I'll dump some oil in there, but I'm going to wait until tomorrow afternoon. So at this point we're kind of at a point where might as well wait. Uh, I could throw the tires back on, but it's easy access with them off for the sway bar end links when I get those. So. At this point, we're just going to uh, finish cleaning up our mess. I already did most of it and uh, wait until tomorrow afternoon. So, 